Hello, and welcome to another episode of Threat Update. I'm Killian Engler. Joining me as usual is Ryan O'Boyle. And today we have a very special guest with us, Bob Krizik, who is our field CTO here. So I have a really interesting topic this week to talk about. Um, we've seen so many attacks now between SolarWinds and Exchange Online, and uh, some of the proposed solutions were a concept called Zero Trust. And it's been around since I think about 2010, and it recently just got a big shout out from uh, both Microsoft and the NSA as a way to combat some of these advanced threats that we're now facing, it seems, more and more often. So I wanted to bring together this team who has a lot of expertise on it to give a background on Zero Trust, a little bit of what it's about, and some key takeaways and ways that uh, maybe you, as the audience, can help uh, maybe implement something like this. So, Bob, I know you have a lot of experience in the federal realm. You've worked a lot with those teams. So I thought you would be a great person to ask, well, what is Zero Trust? Killian, thanks for letting me join you guys today. Uh, in regards to Zero Trust, it really is a security model. Right. It's a journey that you that you really want to get through in regards to making sure you trust no one, assume that you've already been infiltrated, right. that the bad, bad actors are in, and they're getting access to your data. Regardless of which model you look at, data is either the base, the foundation, sure. or it's at the center of, of the whole scenario. So you really need to try to uh, build out on that and make sure that data is properly secured throughout. That makes a lot of sense. And it sounds like, um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you know, like a least privileged model, or there's a couple of the security things I think that, that people might be familiar with. So it's not a completely new and foreign concept. It sounds like it's just the next evolution of um, something that, that we might all be familiar with. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask about too is, um, Ryan, from a practical perspective, I know you've done a lot of investigations with you know people affected by solar winds and some of the exchange investigations, and I wanted to gauge and see, you know, based on your experience and, and working with some of these customers, have you noticed organizations that have implemented that zero trust model or least privileged model fare better than ones that haven't, or or what has your experience been with that? Yeah, you know, I, I think that's definitely the case. We, we've talked about this in the past in, in regards to ransomware, and I know that's generally more of the, you know, kind of the end result of a lot of these scenarios. Right. Um, but organizations where we have things like the most overexposure of data, you know, where people have the, the most access to the, the most areas of the network, uh, they tend to be the hardest hit because it's easy for attackers to move laterally, escalate privileges, and at the same time, sometimes they don't even really need to escalate privileges, right? right? They might already have the access just getting in for the first place. So again, oftentimes the, the worst ransomware scenarios are the ones where you know it's the easiest to spread and right. it happens so quickly. Unfortunately, it's it's tough to come back from that. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Makes, uh, a lot oh. of sense. Hey, we have Bob back. <laughs> hey, we have Bob back. Um, so, in terms of kind of what people can do to help protect themselves or move in that way, um, Bob, I think this is maybe a good one for you. Ryan talked a little bit about. Um, the overexposures and that global access being kind of the the bane of least uh, privilege and the bane of zero trust. Um, from your experience, what steps or what can people do to start to move in that direction? Or what have you advised your customers um, when going down this journey? Yeah, and that's a great question. So a lot of times, to, to Ryan's point, least privilege is the most important thing, but you need to understand where your sensitive data lives. Right. You need to understand who's touching it. You need to baseline users and devices. It really comes down to understanding the norm. And when yeah. you see abnormal, really when you need to act. So having that capability, being able to do that is, is important. Now I can tell you, I've worked at the Dreamfort Labs and I've worked with some folks within the NSA and DOD. And in many cases, they'll say, look, when it comes to applications, when it comes to databases and structured information, it's quite simple to do that because sure. you know where everything lives. But when we look at unstructured or the areas that user created generated data, they said that they have deer in the headlights looks. And you have to realize you can find that data, you can baseline all the users and data, and it's what Verona is best in that regard. That makes a that makes a lot of sense, um, and, and maybe I'll open this up to, to both Bob and Ryan um, as you're going through this and as you're working down that process. Is there maybe one simple tip that you can you can recommend? You know, how would they find out where those global groups are, or or how would they take that first step in eliminating that access? Is there is there kind of a one thing that we can distill down for people? Putting you both on the spot here. <laughs> 
I mean, from the perspective of finding where global mm-hmm. access is, that, that isn't the difficult yeah. part. The difficult part is really understanding who's touching that data right. and being able to get down to that least privilege. You need to get to that funnel effect to only the right people having access to the data. If you can do that, you've already created the data level micro perimeter. Right. And then your next generation firewalls, your EDRs, your DLPs, your data tagging, labeling can all take action from that point on. But the first thing you have to do is really limit the access, make sure that the policies and the access control lists are down to, to exactly who needs it. And if it's everyone, domain right. users, authenticated users, being able to filter that filter that out. And just something I would add, you know, I think, Bob, that's a great point. And this might be kind of assumed in, in your response, but, you know, I think at least just turning the lights on and, and giving yourself the visibility to be able to start to do that. You know, whether it's mapping your on-prem identities, your cloud identities, understanding, you know, where users are out there. You know, we, we run into a lot of situations where organizations don't even really have an ability to, to start to do that. So coming up with a, a way, a process, a solution that you can start to at least turn the lights on and understand where they're at today, you know, I think that's key. Yeah, yeah. and, and that, that's a great point. I'm sorry, Kelly, I was going to just add one more thing. With that, when you turn the lights on, you need to do continuous monitoring. Yep. You need to understand everything that's yeah. happening in the environment. You can't just trust the network monitoring and logging that's going on. You need to trust the data as well. Endpoint right. network is great. You need to have it, but it's not enough. Bob, it's like you read my mind. I was going exactly there. <laughs> Very good. So just to, just to summarize, I mean, it sounds like we have a pretty good process in place and we have some experts here that, of course, can help. So if you're thinking about going on this journey, if you're looking at Zero Trust as, as a framework and as a model, um, we have some experts that can help. We have some resources that we can offer for this as well. And, of course, you can talk to somebody like Bob, too, if, uh, if you're a Vernon's customer. He's more than happy, Bob, and volunteering for work to, to hop on. Um, and same thing too with Ryan. Uh, we have experts that are here to help as well. If you're working on this, if you're going uh, down this path and maybe you're seeing alerts and you wanna do a little bit of investigation, that's something that we can of course help with as well too. So uh, thank you both. This has been really informative. I think hopefully the audience got a lot out of it. This was great advice, guys. And uh, the audience out there, if you enjoyed this content, please maybe consider subscribing to the channel. That really helps us. Uh, Give us a like if you enjoyed the video. And of course, leave a comment. Uh, Brian, Bob, and I always read those. It was really nice when we get comments from the audience. Uh, We'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Ryan. Take care. Have a good one.